in the beginning, there was only darkness. And then God created the light, and he separated the light from the darkness, and he called it day and night, and he saw that it was good, and that was the end of the first day. Let me skip ahead to the fifth day, because on the fifth day, God created the creatures of the sea, and the animals that walked on the land, and the birds of the sky. I love birds. I love watching birds. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's skip ahead one more time and go to the eighth day. Because on the eighth day, God made the airplane. So <laughs> that's my favorite day. Because that's the day we didn't have to watch anymore. We got to experience the, the miracle of flight. And let me tell you about it. We got these birds that are migrating. So they're migrating birds, and they're all slicked up and aerodynamic, and they're going the distance. That's one thing. The other thing is they're joined up in a V formation. Now they're like NASCARs. Two NASCARs that are drafting each other can go faster than any individual NASCAR by itself. And so it is with these migrating birds. They can go, what I'm told, is 71% further by doing this type of formation than any one of them by itself. And they also do it for mutual, mutual protection and support. There's all kinds of stories behind that. Now, I've, done, I've studied birds a long time, and uh, my grandson and I did a study on them. We were wondering, well, we knew what the V formations were for, but why is one side of the V always longer than the other, and we discovered that there's more birds in the longer side. <laughs> my, my, my grandson was, was five at the time, and we were working on counting skills. Okay. <laughs> when they get to the other end and they're ready to land, well, look what, look what we learned from the birds. Nice, huh? Now, when they get to where they're going, it's time to land. Now, in this case, we would make sure that the two little indicators, the green ones in the cockpit, are green, saying that the landing gear is down and locked. The flaps are down. You're bleeding off energy. If you got dive brakes, use them. Look what we learned from the birds. This, if you ask any pilot, they'll tell you that landing is probably the most fun part of a flight because it's the most challenging and it's an art form. You're managing the energy as you're coming down from your cruise altitudes and your cruise airspeeds and you're coming down to a soft landing. And the thing of it is, any landing that you, that you can survive is a good landing. <laughs> if, you, if, you can, if you can use the airplane again, that's an even better landing. <laughs> but if you ask any pilot, and they tell you that every landing that they execute is the textbook perfect picture of a landing, they're lying to you, OK? OK, we need to talk about some various aspects of flight, and one that I'm most passionate about is soaring flight, because I think it's the most pure kind. So I got to give you a couple of lessons here, and then we'll show you, show you how it works. On this picture right here, you can see I, I had a professional artist help me draw this up. We, uh, we have a ridge, and there's air flowing up the side of the ridge. So that would be the front side of the hill. And you could take something like this, a model airplane, and throw it across that ridge, across the top, and with radio control, and no engine, no motors, nothing, fly that thing across the side of that ridge all day long. And uh, we have a great time doing this. And there, that would be called slope soaring, so I'm gonna show you a demonstration of that here in just a second. If you were to take your airplane and dive it over the top of that ridge, stay in the wind, and then dive down into the calm, the airplane will accelerate, and before you smash it into the ground, you got to pull up and go back into the wind again. We learned this from the albatross. I'll show you a picture. But that would be called dynamic soaring, so I'll show you how that works. There's how the slope lift works. And we learned that. We watched the pelicans. And if you want to see how it works with model airplanes, See, you didn't see them flapping their wings there. They were riding that wave just like a surfer rides a wave. Here's how we do it with our model airplanes. Go to the top of the hill, throw it off, just go flying around all day long. It's an amazing thing. It's fun to play with. 
Here's what we learned from the albatross. The albatross can fly across vast spans of ocean, and they do that by going into the wind above the crest of the waves, and then they'll dive down into the calm in the trough of the waves. And they'll do that with the wings outstretched, and they don't have to flap them. They can go all the way across the ocean like that. It's called dynamic soaring. And if the sound, we can do this with model airplanes. Uh, some Air Force pilots have tried it with gliders in, in real gliders, but the forces would just rip the aircraft apart if they overdo it. And I'll show you how that would happen. Here's a model airplane doing dynamic soaring, and the sound is just, gotta let you hear the sound. Go into the wind, go down into the calm. Go up into the wind, down into the calm. Listen, Listen for a thump, a thump. That's the shear layer between the wind up here and the calm down here. And it's slapping the wing as it goes through. The world record is 500 miles an hour. It's amazing. And this wasn't discovered by people until about 15 years ago. But the albatross has been doing it for millions of years. Okay, one more type of soaring flight is this. You got your plowed fields, you got your alfalfa fields, you got your different textures and your different uh, colors. And the sun is warming up the earth. And because of the different colors and textures, it's um, heating differently in different places. Air, rising air currents will go up, and it's called a thermal. In the middle of the summer, probably in the middle of the day, when you see these puffy clouds out there, they're being fed by thermals. The air goes up, it cools down. Uh, when, you, when it uh, cools to the point where the moisture condenses in the cloud, you see the base of the cloud. This cloud starts forming. The pelicans show us how to thermal. They got a good one there. And w if I'm in a real glider out there flying around, I'm going to go where the pelicans are because they're marking those thermals for us. OK, now I got to have my Newton team up here. We got a Newton wagon here. Not yet, Deb, you stay right there. <laughs> Let's talk about this miracle of flight because it's just amazing and it's mind boggling. What these folks are going to do is show you, uh, I'm going to start this statement and see if you can finish it for me. It's going to be Newton's third law. And Newton's third law says that for every action, help me out here. Perfect, exactly. OK, we're not going to be able to discuss flight unless we know that. And this is a, a good demonstration of that. And we did a trial run on this yesterday, and it worked pretty good. But it's kind of unfair because this is kind of a soft surface here. And hopefully the wheelchair is going to move. We'll call it a Newton wagon, all right? But Giselle here is going to, I'll get out of your way so you can see. Giselle is going to start flinging sandbags that direction. So that'll be the action. Go ahead and start, folks. Here we go. Ooh, it's working. It's working. It's working. Look at this. Just two more miles, <laughs> 20 more sandbags, <laughs> almost there. We're going to do this as an Olympic event. I'm going to try to get this all organized. Thanks. We're good. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> See how you got? The action is the sandbags go one way, and the reaction was the Newton wagon goes the other way. It's pretty amazing. If, Alan? You want to take the wheelchair down, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have a pound of air I could have out there? I need a pound of air. Oh, oh, there we go. We got somebody bringing a pound of air. All right. Here's how airplanes fly. On the diagram that you have right here, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK. Let's see here. I wonder how she knew. Right? One pound of air. There's another thing you should probably see. 13 cubic feet. And you may not believe me there. You're saying, well, that's a pretty small box for 13 cubic feet. But, you know, measure it out. If you're two and a half feet by two and a half feet by two and a half feet, you cube that, you're going to come up with more than 13 cubic feet. So this is a pound of air. All right? 
What you see on the diagram up there, another professional artist uh, brought that in for me, as the engines are moving air back, that's the action, that's the sandbags going back, right? The airplane goes forward, there's your reaction, that's how they work, okay? The air is coming down off the wings, so air goes down, airplane goes up, and you can maintain level flight. But here's what blows my mind. Take a one million pound airplane and move enough of these to make it accelerate in those few seconds that it took to get it to go down the runway. Now, it's moving, but now it climbs up like that. I mean, it's, it's going up like a rocket. That just kind of blows your mind. Can you imagine the numbers that are involved in all this? That's what I think is a miracle. Getting, oh, by the way, oops, we're going to back up here. Um, Imagine this, you're, you're at a railroad crossing and you're waiting for the train to go by. And watch for the tanker cars, the big round ones, not the square ones. Look at the capacity, if, if it's not going too fast, you can see the capacity is like 200, 225,000 pounds. It takes one and a half of those cars to fill one of those airplanes with fuel. So it's like one and a half tanker cars and you're gonna get it off the ground and do that? Think of the amount, think of the number of these that you're flowing through those engines and passing across those wings to make that happen. Now, I gotta show you this. I've been fixing airplanes for a living all my adult life. As a matter of fact, I teach uh, men and women the aircraft maintenance profession. And what you see here is one of my classes is building a, rebuilding a 1966 fabric covered glider. And every one of those people on that team learned their lessons in the classroom. They, we did things like we're doing right here. You learn about aerodynamics, how do airplanes fly, all that kind of stuff. And then you learn about the mechanical aspects of it, all the systems that are in the airplane and all that kind of stuff. Well, they gotta know what they're doing, right? They need to know that when they're done, that what they've done is airworthy and they move on to the next task. And the reason I'm telling you this is that they're not taking their job any less serious than your health care providers, your doctors, and your nurses. We exercise the same sorts of professionalism doing this and making this happen as, as it's, it carries the same impact. Your safety depends on it. And it's our solemn vow to you that we look at our jobs that way. When it comes to the, some of these projects can last for years. I call this a tale of two airplanes here. And that's the green airplane that you just saw in the video. The white airplane is another airplane that another one of my classes um, overhauled. They took it all down, put it all back together again, made it better than new. And now that airplane is going to tow up the glider that you just saw being overhauled on the video. Um, and when a project like this that takes years comes to completion, I mean, it puts butterflies in our stomachs when it comes time for that first flight. That's a natural thing, we'll feel those butterflies, but in our heart and in our mind, we know that this thing is ready to go. We, we, we did our work, we did it the way we were supposed to, it's been checked, it's been rechecked, and checked again, and it's like, it's ready. That first flight can be a kind of an emotional time. Um, I have heard, and I can't think of the name of the company that does this, but when they build airplanes, it's a company that builds airplanes, when they build an airplane and it's ready to go for the test flight, the test pilot will gather, gather up the billfolds and the purses of the team leaders of the team that built the airplane and take those things on the test flight. And they get that stuff back at the end of the flight. It's a pretty interesting concept. But when it comes time for you to get, I'm telling you this because as the traveling public, you need to know that, I think. And we, re, we assure you that we look at our jobs very seriously and we know that we have your safety in our hands. So, ladies and gentlemen, you've been awesome. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me here. And uh, go out and watch the birds and look forward to your next experience with the Miracle of Flight. Thank you.